What's happening ladies and gentlemen, this is Min for Architecture Inspirations. Today I'm going to show you some material tips and tricks in D5 Render. Let's get started. D5 Render already has a good material library, but the cool thing is that you can also create your own PBR materials in D5. But what are PBR materials? Physically based rendering or PBR is a method of shading and rendering that provides a more accurate representation of how light interacts with material properties, allowing you to create realistic materials in your rendering software. There are many websites that provide PBR materials, I cover them in these two videos. For this video, I will download some materials from Polygon, which is a good website for premium materials, but it also has free materials. I will use this metal material here. D5 Render uses the metallic or metalness PBR workflow, so I will choose this option before I download it. After it is downloaded, just unpack the zip file to get these different maps. As you can see, a set of PBR materials often consists of multiple images or maps, and I will cover all of them in this video. Now let's go back to D5 Render. First, we need to add some objects where we can apply materials. I will go to the library and select the model library. Then in the other category, I can add a plane to the scene. Then I will use the material picker by clicking here or press I on my keyboard and then click on the plane object. You can see that this is the base material that comes with the object. The default tab is the base color tab, which is where we can change the color of the material. The other tab is the base color map tab, and here we can import our first PBR map. First is the base color or diffuse map, which is a map that contains color information. In D5 Render, you can click on this button to import your own color map. To know which map to use, we can look at the name of each map to see what type of map they are. You can see that our material has been updated to show the color map. When you import the material, you can also change the size by adjusting the stretch UV values here. In this case, I will leave it at 1. If you click on this button, you will have more options to edit the color map, such as inverting the color. The next slider controls the contrast of the map. And these three sliders are the hue, saturation, and brightness sliders. If you go back to the base color tab, you can change the color that you want to blend with the map. These options are very useful for when you're wanting to change the color of the material, such as bricks or fabrics, etc. For now, I will keep these settings at default. Next is the normal map, which is a blue or purple map that is used to create an illusion of depth on the surface of an object. In D5 Render, even if the user does not have a normal map, D5 automatically generates the normal information based on the color map to make the material appear bumpy, which you can control using the slider here. It's quite hard to see the effects, so we can go to the base color tab and override the base color map temporarily with a dark color. Now you can see the effects easier. However, this method is only for when you don't have a normal map, so to achieve the most realistic result, it's best to import the normal map that comes with the PBR material. There we go, that looks a lot better now. Now you can adjust the intensity of the normal map using this slider. However, one important thing that you need to know about normal maps is that there are two types of normal maps, DirectX and OpenGL. If I render uses DirectX, while the normal map that we downloaded from Polygon uses OpenGL. This is not very apparent on this material that we are using, but if we test another material like this one, you can see that the direction of the shadows is not correct relative to the direction of the sunlight. So we need to convert this map to make it work in D5. First, open it up in Photoshop, then go to the Channels tab. Now select the green channel and press Ctrl I to invert it. Now we can turn the RGB channel back on and export it. Then let's reload our normal map. There we go, that looks correct now. Even though the change is a little hard to see here, but for other materials like bricks, using the normal maps correctly can make a huge difference. Next is the specular parameter, which controls the intensity of the non-metal materials. However, since we are working on a metal material with a metalness workflow, there is no specular map in our PBR material package. In this case, you can set this value to anything and we can skip it to the next map. I will cover the specular map in more details later in the video. Next is the roughness parameter, which controls how smooth or rough material will be. You can see that at the value of 1, the material will be very rough, and at 0, 
the material will be very smooth. Note that the normal map will also affect the look of our material. I will set the normal value to 0 for now, so we can see the full effects of this parameter when we import the roughness map. The roughness map is a black and white map that defines how rough or smooth your material will be. The darker area will make the material smoother and more reflective, while the lighter area will make the material rougher and less reflective. I find that when using the roughness maps, having the intensity at 1 and setting the color space transfer function to linear will give you the most accurate value for the roughness map, but this can change depending on where you download the maps, so just make changes to the material until you like it. Now I can remove the black color override from the base color so we can see our color map again. There we go, that looks good. Next is the metallic parameter, which if set to 1, then it will make the material metallic. But if it's set to 0, then the material will be non-metallic. When working with metal materials, the color of the reflection is decided by the base color and the base color map. You can use this button here to import a metalness map, which is a grayscale map where white represents fully metallic and black represents non-metallic. Here you can see the parts that are white are metallic, while the parts that are black are rusty non-metallic materials. As mentioned before, the specular parameter will affect non-metallic materials, so you can use it to adjust the reflection intensity of the rusted areas if you like. And there we go, we have a finished material. Now if you have another surface that you want to apply this material on, such as this sphere for example, then first select the material with the material picker tool, then press O for the material brush tool, and apply it to the surface. Pretty cool, huh? And that's the workflow for metallic materials. For non-metallic materials, such as this material on Polygon, sometimes they use the specular workflow, which do not have the roughness and metalness map, but instead they have the glossiness and reflection map. In this case, the reflection map will be placed on the specular slot. And since glossiness and roughness maps are inverts of each other, you can just import the glossiness map in the roughness slot and then invert the color using this button. Usually the glossiness maps are made with the linear workflow, similar to the roughness maps, so I will need to change the color transfer function to linear. Alternatively, I can open up the glossiness map in Photoshop and invert the map with Ctrl I to turn it into a roughness map. Then we can just import this map into the roughness slot like usual. There we go, the other maps are the same workflow as before. The normal map still needs to be flipped along the green channel in this case. And the color map can be loaded in as usual. And since this is a non-metallic material, we can just keep the metallic intensity at zero. That looks pretty good. D5 also has a displacement material template where you can add a displacement map, which is a black and white image that tells your computer how and where to displace a surface. The difference between a normal and a displacement map is a normal map only changes the way the light affects the surface, giving it an illusion of depth. While a displacement map in D5 uses parallax mapping to create more realistic bump effects. Some materials also come with an ambient occlusion map, which is a map that will be multiplied with the base color map to enhance the shadow in the corners and crevices and add more details to the material. I find it really useful especially when the material has a displacement map. Once you are happy with your material, you can use this button to save it to your local library, which you can find by going to the asset library in the material section and in the local tab. You can change the name of your material by right-clicking and rename. Also, you won't have to reload all the maps again, but instead, you can simply use it right inside of the D5 library. And if you'd like, you can render out a nice looking photo and set it as the thumbnail for your material. Pretty cool, huh? The last tip that I want to show you is the batch import feature, which will let you import multiple PBR maps at once in just a click of a button. Just click on this button and select multiple maps then D5 will automatically import all those maps and place them into appropriate slots. Note that in order for this to work seamlessly, the maps have to have the correct names corresponding to their properties. For example, in order for D5 to import the correct map into the base color slot, the map needs to have one of these keywords in this name. You can refer to this list for all of the name and rules when using the batch import feature. After you use the batch import feature, 
You can edit the material using the tips I show you in the video. Now let's talk about the different material templates that D5 offers, which provides additional settings that are perfect for different types of materials. First is the transparent material template, which is used for creating glass material. There are several settings that you can use to customize the look of the glass material, such as the base color, refraction, roughness, and transparency. Sometimes a glass material might have an error in the refraction if the glass object in your model doesn't have any thickness. If that's the case, then you can enable the thickness option, which will fix the refraction effect. The water material template will let you create all kinds of water materials such as pool water, river water, or even ocean water. Here you will see several settings for the water such as the base color, but you can also add a base color map if you like. The normal parameter will control the height of the wave, and for the size of the wave, you can adjust the UV values of the material. The specular will control the reflectance of the water surface. The refraction controls the index of refraction of the water surface. The flow velocity controls the rate of the water animation. You can go to display and turn on real time to preview the water animation. Finally is depth, which you can use to create shallow water or deeper water. Note that you need to model the part below the water surface to see the effect. Next is the car material template, which has an additional reflection layer on top of the normal custom material to simulate the effect of a clear coat layer. You can see that it has the typical settings that are found in the custom material template, such as the different maps, and also the base color, which I can use to blend with the current map. But the car material also has two additional settings. First is the clear coat, which controls the reflectance of the clear coat layer. Here you can see the car with the regular material, and here it is with the clear coat layer set to 1. There's also the clear coat roughness, which controls the roughness of the clear coat layer, which affects whether the reflection of the clear coat is blurred or not. Here's the car material with the clear coat roughness at 0, 0 0.1, and 0 0.3. You can fine tune these settings however you want to create a perfect material for your car. Next is the cloth material template, which is used to simulate fabric materials. The cloth material template will give you the opacity map and opacity intensity parameters, which you can use to simulate transparency produced by the holes in the fabric. This is very useful for creating current in fabrics like this. There's also a fall off parameter, which simulates the widening effect usually seen in cloth materials. Next is the custom alpha material, which is used for materials that have transparency like this chain link material here. Just load in the opacity map, which is a black and white map where the white color is opaque and black is transparent. Alternatively, if the material comes with a PNG color map that is already masked out, you won't even need the opacity map at all. The video material template is quite straightforward. It allows you to use a video file to create effects like a TV screen. Here you can control the brightness of the video using this slider. There's also this switch, which controls whether the light emitted by the video material will affect the lighting on the surrounding objects. If you want a regular emissive material, then you can select the custom material and go down to emissive and turn it on. Like the video material, you can also adjust the intensity as well as the emissive color, which you can choose using the material picker, or you can use a temperature slider to control it. There's also the cast shadow setting, which controls whether or not the material affects the lighting and cast shadows. The foliage material template allows you to create translucent material, which is very useful for creating realistic leaves. There are two settings that you can use, which is the opacity map, which controls the hollow effect of the material, and the opacity intensity, which controls the light transmission of the material. Finally is the grass material in D5, which you can use to create grass with a click of a button. It will come with several presets that you can choose. Additionally, you can change the color of the grass by blending it with the base color, or by using the settings to edit the color map. Then you can control the height, density, 
and even trim the grass any way you like. Pretty cool, huh? And those are some tips and tricks for creating realistic materials in D5 Render. That's all for today, guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Comment below if you have any questions. Stay inspired, guys, and I'll see you next time.